Before I begin, I would like to clear up the bathroom incident that happened before. <laughs> I'm wearing Spanx because these podiums make me look huge, okay? Uh, pause for virtual pause. Uh, also, uh, in regards to my speech, the first hour is kind of slow, then it really picks up, okay? Uh, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Some people say I've been given a bad break, but I've got an awful lot to live for. Thank you. Those were the words spoken by Lou Gehrig, July 4th, 1939. Words spoken by a man fighting a disease that would later come to bear his name. A man who took 272 words to thank the press, the fans, the bad boys. He recognized his teammates, past and present, his managers, his parents, and lastly, his wife. He never said, why me? He only expressed gratitude for everyone around him. 272 words, unscripted, unrehearsed, spoken from his heart, the same number of words in the Gettysburg Address. The difference back then was that Lou Gehrig was fighting a disease all by himself, and now we are fighting one all together. But I don't wanna focus on that, I wanna focus on the comeback. Like they said in the movie Shawshank Redemption, get busy living or get busy dying. I wouldn't be here or the person I am today without these influences in my life. It started early. Our first week in dental school, a very wise professor told us a story. It was our first encounter with endodontics. His name was Marshall Smolson. He wrote the book on endo, literally. He told us the function and purpose of the heart was to pump blood to the pulp of the tooth. We were all confused by this, but as time went on, we understood what he meant. Your heart is important in this profession for multiple reasons. Marshall was a very wise man. The heart was a recurring theme for me, even back then. As you saw in the videos, I have a wonderful amount of nieces and nephews. So for family first, I need to talk about them briefly so you can understand who I am. To our nieces and nephews, who I know are watching this virtual installation, your attendance is noted and will be reflected this year in your Christmas gifts. <laughs> to our family who have always been there for me, thank you. To Ernie and Jody, Nancy and Frank, Carol and Rich for their generosity and let us spending so much time with these children. Celeste and I could not have given our time to organize dentistry without our family picking up the slack with family functions, holidays, and birthdays, and always there when I need them. There's so much that more I want to say, but I cannot express my gratitude and thanks to them. But since I'm saying it now, I am not going to buy a card. Daddy, Celeste's dad, has been like a father-in-law to me. He gave me his eld eldest daughter and said, at the altar, no returns. <laughs> he also tells everyone I'm a funny guy. My father-in-law has always been the first one there to help out no matter what. His words of wisdom to me every week are not to do anything electrical. I don't know why, it was just a couple of small fires. Thanks, Daddy, for always being there. My mother-in-law also loved me. It was a special person who treated me almost as good as my brother-in-law, Ernie, and that's saying a lot. Next is Anne Annemarie, who you saw had a wonderful job of speaking. She's everybody's favorite aunt. Anne Annemarie loves puzzles, word searches, Steve Harvey, and ice cream. Anne Annemarie has helped us for years, first by watching Sammy, and now by watching Mickey and Buddy. She has the kindest heart and is always ready to help us out. She's like an older sister to Celeste and her siblings, and her only major flaw is that she is very honest and has no filter which is why you never ask Aunt Anna Marie how your genes look on you. But we love her anyway, and we could not have traveled for CDS without her. Next is Marie, the very first person I met in the family when she was about four or five years old. She was with Aunt Celeste at our condo swimming pool. She is the leader, the oldest, and the wisest of the cousins. Everybody loves and respects Marie. Together with her husband, Jared, they have two beautiful daughters who you saw, Gianna and Marissa, who live for dance. Michael's next. Next in line, 
Michael, he's always the voice of reason and ready at any time for great conversation. He could be seen in his youth in a pile with any combination of his two younger brothers. Michael is an excellent father and coach, raising three boys, mission, audit, and crew. He continually sets a great example for his boys. Jonathan is next. There was a time when we all feared him. John is that one that everyone turns to when they need help. He's the first one to come over and help you because he's smart and can fix anything. John has a special kindness in his heart. We are all very proud of John, who together with Audra, have a beautiful daughter, Monroe, who is almost a year old. Kevin, last but not least. Kevin, the youngest of Ernie and Jody's children. Kevin decided it would be easier to be in charge of the cousins that would follow instead of dealing with Marie and his brothers. He is very generous and loves talking sports and movies with his uncle Dino. Kevin and his wife, Shireen, have a beautiful daughter, Ariella, who just turned one this week. Nancy and Frank's oldest child is Paulina, my goddaughter, and my special bond. She's not only a nurse practitioner and educator, she also works with her sister, choreographing dance for the high school. Paulina is a beautiful soul, very thoughtful, and always thinks of others first. She has a new boyfriend, as you saw, Chris. He's the new guy. He's still on a family trial period. We are running some background checks on him because he has been telling us for years that he works from home, and we don't know what that means. The good news is, though, he is my pen pal, and we write frequently. Frankie's next. You saw Frankie with his hat on backwards, also known as DK, DJ Frankie Fresh. Yes, ladies, he's currently single. He's working on his CPA. He loves the White Sox, beef jerky, and the music of Yanni. Frankie is always the last call on my birthday, and although he doesn't say much, he's an excellent listener, probably because he has two sisters and a mother. I love you, Frankie. Angelina, the youngest, prettiest, and wisest of the group. I think she wrote this. It's not typed, it's written in her handwriting. She is kind and considerate and always seems to know when to send a friendly text to pick up your day. Angelina is a recreational therapist and her disposition is perfect for that field that she works in. Angelina is very passionate about her patients and promised me Netflix and Aurelio's Pizza next week. Paula and Anthony are watching as well with their two boys, Oliver and Elliot. Paula finds a way to keep us updated with pictures and videos of the boys. Paula is also a nurse with her master's and educator as well. She is known for her humor and quick wit. Hold on, that was still about Paulina. The two of them are BFFs and both are funnier when they are together. Next is Anna, my Anna Banana. She cried for the first two years of her life. We thought it was because she was breached but I think it was, she was crying because she found out who her father was. <laughs> Anna has her master's and teaches special needs children. Also my goddaughter, Anna has a pure heart and writes beautiful birthday cards. She also has a boyfriend, Dave something, Davidson, who knows. Again, we're still doing background checks on him as well. As I can tell you, we're a very close family. We are all very blessed. Jim, Gil Jim Valvano said, you should do three things every day. You should laugh, you should cry, and you should submerse yourself in deep thought. I do this every day by 9 a.m. because I live with Celeste. <laughs> it's been an interesting quarantine. I had asked her to switch partners uh, with George and Maria so that George could come with me and, Mar and Celeste could go with Maria. Which brings me to my parents. My mom, Vicky, was tough but fair. As the youngest, I, will, of course, was her favorite. We got along like roommates when I was in high school. She was great to my friends from church, the neighborhood, and from work. She came from Greece, worked hard, met my father, and had two boys. I get from her my work ethic, compassion, and common sense. I lost her when, I was, when she was 55. I was just a sophomore in dental school. I miss her every day. My father, Lou, was also tough, but reasonable. He could get me to laugh or cry within a three-minute period. He was a smart man with his master's in chemistry, but was able to explain complicated things to all of us. He taught me work ethics and how to fix things around the house. I learned a lot from him and still remember what he taught me, even though I lost him when I was 13 and he was only 46. My father's lessons are still relevant today, and I use them often. 
He taught me how to be objective and how to always look at both sides. Two of my dad's favorite things to say to me were, the worst thing in life is wasted talent, and a C student is an A student that doesn't study. I love them every day, and I miss them more now than ever. You heard the music over the rainbow, which brings me to the scarecrows. Scarecrows are the people you meet along your journey, like Dorothy did in The Wizard of Oz. Here are a few of mine. I started my career in Villa Park because of the faith of two men. Rick Battistoni and his late dad, Jack, spoke on my behalf without ever meeting me. It was because of these two guys that I got my one and only job interview in dentistry. I was hired based on their recommendation, and for this I am eternally grateful. So when I started my dental career in 1986 in Villa Park, I met two dentists that would change my life forever. The first was Mark Wolf, an oral surgeon and gentleman beyond belief. We went out for Chinese food the first months I started working and we remain friends to this day. So a Greek guy and a Jewish guy go to a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> Sounds like a joke, but it's the beginning of a great story. Mark never refused to see any of my patients and on last minute notice, he would see everyone. He had always treated my family like his own. His son Rob is there now along with Tony Dosi, who follow Mark's example and remain close. I will always remember Mark for his kindness, thoughtfulness, and sense of humor when I needed a friend most. Jim Genakakis, who is a good-looking Greek man, which I know is redundant, pause for laughter, is an endodontist extraordinaire and has become a true friend who not only sees my patients but treats me as well. He is kind and gentle. Ways make him perfect for what he does. I always say that Jimmy has the disposition of an air traffic controller and he always puts his patience at ease. Jimmy has always been there for me, and along with Jeff Hembro, another classmate of ours, they have shown me more than it is at Oakbrook Endodontics, where their motto is, every tooth has four canals, even the front ones. The only problem with Jimmy and Mark is that when you have an endodontist and an oral surgeon covering for you when you're away at a meeting, when you come back, either the tooth is gone or it has endodontics, even for a buckle pit. I love them both and will never forget their kindness. John Girding, as you saw, Jubilarian, has a special place in my heart because I was John's general chairman for the 2012 Midwinter Meeting. John inspired me enough that I wanted to become more involved with CDS leadership. John is in the category of his own. We really bonded as we traveled from branch to branch, which is what I will miss most this year with Gene Romo. Promoting the Midwinter together was one of the highlights of being general chairman. We spent a lot of time in the car talking Communication is still everything. Congratulations, Sean and Ted and Todd Cubbin, both past presidents of CDS and are now being celebrated as jubilarians. George and Maria, how do I possibly begin to thank the woman who cooked all my meals for me this year? Maria, thank you. I know you do. I don't know how to begin to thank these two people. Jim Valvano also said that God must have loved ordinary people because he made so many of us. But every day, every single day, ordinary people do extraordinary things. George and Maria are anything but ordinary. Every day during the shutdown at 4.45 p.m., George showed up with a home-cooked meal. Every day, every single day. No off days, no excuses, just great food, and sorry, George, just average service. <laughs> Their generosity and kindness are unbelievable. Celeste always takes credit for meeting them first, but that's okay because as my brother and sister, they like me more. If you only meet two people like this in your life, you are very fortunate. Maria and George are a blessing and have always been there for us. I will always thank God for the blessing that we have with these two amazing people. George and I also share one other major thing in common our office managers always think they're right. That's our wives. What's nice about Maria is, not only do you get Maria, you get Mima, Sylvia, and of course, Laura, the youngest, my favorite, who love us and treat us like family. Next is Chad and Reka. What can I say about a man who showed us courage, strength, and leadership during this past year as ADA president? Well, and he needed all that just because he's married to Reka. 
Chad and Rekha Gahani are examples of what great people can do when put into difficult circumstances. They will forever be remembered for what they did during this time more than the time itself. They both have been there for Celeste and I along the way, and I know they will continue to do so. They prove that you can still lead and have a big heart. I will cherish the laughs and friendship forever. Chad also introduced me to Cesar Sabatis, our new president-elect of the ADA, also with a big heart and all class. We keep meeting wonderful people along the way, just like Dorothy did. It's not a coincidence. I need to tell you about George Celine, my best friend and neighbor growing up in Homewood. George and his family were there before and after I lost my father. They taught me what good neighbors were all about. Don, Betty, Dawn, George, Beth. Every time my mother cooked or baked, the first batch went next door, next door and vice versa. Later, we became even closer when George married Liz Slavin, daughter of CDS past president, Bill Slavin. So now when I see him, he's nice to me because he says we are related in some weird Greek way. I will always be thankful for our friendship. Our lives growing up were like the movie, The Sandlot. We played baseball every day. I often wonder how much texting we would have done had we had cell phones back then. After we moved out, I thought you were only allowed one set of good neighbors in your life until we met Amy and Dave who moved two doors down from us. I never knew how much I needed them until I turned two pages, until we met. I thank God every day for our friendship is that is one of my most prized possessions. Johnny Manta, who I know is watching. My best friend from church, we met over 50 years ago and were altar boys and played basketball together for years. I still get the occasional text of why I didn't pass him the ball more, so I just don't respond. John was from Flossmore and introduced me to his friends, which made the transition to high school much easier. His birthday is January 3rd, so he got his driver's license first and would drive from three towns away to pick me up to go to practice. Now that I think about it, maybe I should have passed him the ball more. His words of advice to me then and now are the same and are from Mick Jagger. He tells me now, and he still does, you can't always get what you want, but sometimes you get what you need. <clears throat> Thanks, Mooch. I love you. Next, you all know him and love him, Perry Thunberg. What can I possibly say about Perry Thunberg that he hasn't emailed me to say already? I met him early in my organized dentistry career. He told me then constantly that he was the youngest president of the ISDS. He still tells me that today. I want to tell you how long I've known him in years and how long we've been BFFs. But I think if I tell you this story, this may help you understand our relationship. At the IDS functions in Springfield, Perry and I used to sit at tables by ourselves because we really didn't like other people. One particular time, we had to sit with an entire group. They served the salads. He looked at me. I looked at him. I took his tomatoes. He took my onions. I took his radishes. He did the olives. We went back and forth for about a minute or so until we realized our salads were perfect. Then somebody across from us at the table said, how long have you two been married? Perry looked at me, I looked at him, I go, you take this. He said, how long have you been ugly? And we all laughed, and I knew back then that we were friends for life. Besides that, he's also very generous, thoughtful, and sometimes, yes, even funny. We have always been a team in Springfield and have been banned from certain establishments. I will always remember his kindness he has shown me over the years. He, was a, he's, he is a distinguished member of the Dental Society and a Hall of Fame friend. His wife and our friend Dawn is very fortunate as he tells her this daily. Dawn is also a quiet force and a true friend. Thank you, Perry, for the ride, but we are not done yet. Another person I met who is wonderful along the way is Nicole Beck Rogers. I met her at Midwestern the first day I started teaching. I walked into the room with 150 students and 15 instructors and did not have a clue. She saw me standing there and said, just stand over here and pretend like you know what you're doing. I said to myself, well, I've been doing that for years. I can handle that. Nicole was the little sister and moral compass that I never knew I needed. She was always very kind and thoughtful. We sat next to each other in lecture and talked about how easy the students had it. She would show me pictures of her on her phone of her family, especially her two boys. 
It was four years later when we received the horrible news that our son Jack Beck Rogers had passed at 19 months. Although I never met him, he has been a major influence on how I view my life. He has taught me to appreciate every single day and to love unconditionally. I think of him daily because I have his mask card in the visor of the car. It serves as a reminder to appreciate what you have. I can't explain why he's gone, but there has to be a reason why he was here for just a short time. It's hard to imagine why such a good family has to go through that. I feel connected with Jack and still think about his presence on this earth. Speaking of losses, I have to mention our friend and classmate, Lauren Feldner. I met him right out of high school at Loyola undergrad. I knew he was special then. Once in dental school, he handled all the political things nobody else wanted to do. His energy and enthusiasm are deeply missed. Lauren was one of a kind and nobody can replace him. Chuck DeFranco was another great loss this year. He was an amazing surgeon, but a better family man and friend that you could not find. My favorite Chuck story is that he invited Celeste and I a few years back to go to the Arcolian Christmas party. It was a great night. Chuck sang, we laughed, took pictures with his entire family. We were all sitting at the table holding hands and Chuck kind of slid towards me and said, uh, you know, Sam Cassio is 90 years old. Sam was doing the prayer. Uh, 91, excuse me. I said, I know Chuck, he was 90 when he started. We just started laughing like a couple of seventh grade kids and couldn't stop until after the meal. There was never a loss for words or laughs when we were together with Chuck and Kim. Chuck had a way of making everyone feel loved and special and always had a great story to share. We miss him dearly and feel the loss of a man right now who is singing for the angels. And finally, my baseball buddy, Dennis Shimbori from San Francisco. We met later in life, but he was one of those people that I had known forever. Every time we saw each other, he had Ernie Banks cards for him and I had Willie Mays cards for him. We would talk about baseball and cards and how our wives really didn't understand our obsession. He was a kind soul and everybody that knew him loved him. I would get texts from him late at night because he was on the West Coast. He was even as so kind to send me a picture of him and his son at game four in 2016 against the Cubs. Dennis was all class. I miss him only when I think of baseball, which is about every three minutes. Another man whose heart was larger than life. Mark Hyman, a friend of mine and life coach, often told me that people come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. My mentors. As I was explaining to my father-in-law, I got the calling to be a dentist when I was 10. When I was in high school, I was Dino the dentist. I only applied to Loyola because that's where I wanted to go to dental school. And these are the three people I need to thank for that. Mike Fideka was our family dentist and all around great guy. He was one of a kind, gentle, and always encouraging about school. He would stay late for appointments after my father died to see our family because my mom had to work. His thoughtfulness and personality is why I'm doing this today. He showed me at an early age that it wasn't just about the teeth. Tom Manolis, the best Greek dentist ever, just ask him. The man had the golden hands of his era. His great personality and humor were also an inspiration for me becoming a dentist. He gave me encouragement. And just like Dr. Videka, his son Todd is also a dentist. Last but not least, Christine Arcos from church. The man was loved and respected by all. I saw how people responded to him when he walked into a room. Everyone at church loved him. And throughout high school, he was always taking me to lunch, mentoring me and taking me to the office to show me things. He never told me he told me never to give up and always remember that kindness is the most important thing you can give to your patients. He stepped in to guide me on this path. His twin daughters also became hygienists, which shows you the love and heart this family had for our profession. I learned a lot on my journey to dentistry with these mentors in my life who taught me to think outside the mouth and inside the heart. The first hour is slow, then it really picks up. Shovik, I met Shovik halfway through his undergrad at U of I. It's amazing how you think you are teaching someone and then you end up learning more about yourself. My time with Shovik was an experience I will never forget. The more I tried to guide him, the more he made me want to mentor him. 
Shovik brought back memories of my great mentors and reignited my passion to share my experiences, just as my mentors did with me. I am extremely proud of how he has worked to be an oral surgeon and how he puts his art into everything he does. Shovik showed me that being a mentor works both ways. I have been very blessed in life to be able to work with students and help teach them to reach their goals. I was constantly reminded of how much I love our profession, seeing it through the eyes of the next generation. Thank you, Shovik. And with that being shared with you, let me remind you that CDS has a great mentorship program. In this virtual world, sometimes just a phone call or a text can help a student get through midterms. We also wanna see our new dentists get involved so they can bring a fresh new perspective while honoring the previous traditions. If you ask those of us who were involved, you will hear stories about that one person that brought you to your first meeting. For me, it started with going to a West Suburban branch meeting at Charcoal's in Villa Park. That's where my journey in organized dentistry began. That's when the house fell on the witch. It is with my involvement in organized dentistry that I have met some of the greatest people from all over the world. We need to connect and communicate not only with our own circle of friends, but reach out to the next generation and guide them with the same passion that was bestowed upon us with our mentors. And for our younger colleagues, pick up the phone and call one of our more mature members. Introduce yourself, ask them how you can get involved. Learn about your future. I never thought when I was sitting out there that I could be standing up here. I thank God for this every day. And the opportunity to be your CDS president in 2021. We are all taught the skills in dental school, but it is our responsibility to teach them what they did not learn in school. As stewards of the profession, we need to make sure that we help those that follow us. It's not just about dentistry. It's about the personal relationships that you form in your dental career. Understand that dentistry is not only done with your hands, but with your heart. In this virtual world, we tend to lose touch. So communication now is more important than ever. We have been working with our communications department this past year to implement the texting feature for the CDS membership. Now more than ever, we need to stay connected. So at this time, for all of you out there in virtual land, I'm asking you to take out your phones, text DENTAL to 69922. That's 69922, text DENTAL. The operators are waiting. Let's give this my pillow call, a guy, the Mill and my pillow guy, I run for his money. Speaking of text, I re received a text from a friend of mine this week, Frank LeCary. We went to undergrad together. He is now the Dean of the Dental School in Utah. Frank was planning on being here today, but for obvious reasons, like all of you, he could not attend. It is through organized dentistry that we had the opportunity to travel to do different meetings all over the world. Every year I used to look forward to the ADA meetings because I knew I would see Frank and we would get caught up again. The relationship we had makes the journey last a lifetime. Frank reminded me that he was at my 18th birthday party, but I'll have to take his word for that. It was great to talk to him this week, and hopefully we can look forward to seeing each other in person. The Zoom platform is not flattering for me. I am taller and thinner than I am right now. Stop, stop. Speaking of college, I can't help but remember my buddy, Rich Osmansky, probably because he calls me every week. Oz and I pledged adults together in the spring of 79, and we're inseparable. He has always been the friend that is there for you. He is the hand that holds you up when you need it most. Dental school brought me many challenges at Loyola, but our class of 86 is legendary. We had something special. Our class was very involved and produced some major talent. We had Lauren Feldner, Phil Figel, Don Kipper, Terry Tierski, Joe Spurlazo, Mary Ann Hollis, Michelle Pinkerton, Lou Simon, Gary Bayless, Desna Sutter, and the infamous John Green, who also writes for the CDS Review. He is a dentist and a lawyer. Interesting combination. John has allowed me to mentor his son, John Jr., who will be graduating in 2021. Things are looking up already. John Sr. said it was okay for me to mentor him because he might actually listen to me. We had a great class, but our instructors were even better. We had Keith Sushi and Tom Sullivan as row instructors. We had Big Al Klasinski and, Fe and Frank Maggio as clinical instructors. I had Jim Maragas and Pete Hasiakos who taught me about ethnic pride. 
But the best, the best advice I received in dental school was from Dean Politis, who taught me the secret of perio in one minute. He told me my senior year to forget everything I learned in the last four years and just remember this. First, the patients get gingivitis, then they get periodontitis, and then you call Dean Politis. <laughs> I will always be thankful to my instructors at Loyola. It was a big family there, and the love and passion was flowing through the halls. We're on the home stretch now. I was told because this was virtual, I could take up to three hours. <laughs> Thanks, Maria. And speaking of virtual, registration is open for our first all virtual midwinter meeting. Please make sure to register and check out the great speakers and exhibitors that will be showcased. I wanna thank my general chair, Jean Romo, and our program chair, Cheryl Mora. It has certainly been a challenge with this new format, but they are working tirelessly with our CDS staff to bring the first all, vid, all virtual midwinter meeting that will set the standard once again. I am so grateful for their efforts and friendship and the fact that they never lost focus or enthusiasm throughout this process. Just a couple of brief thank yous. I wanna thank Adam Tarr, our graphic artist who designed that heart of dentistry with the hand. He's a very talented young man and spent hours with us on the phone. Our newest friend from the hotel, Mike Teed, who has worked so hard to accommodate our needs. My new friends, my new AV friends from PSAV, Sam, Celeste, <laughs> Sam, Dan, and Jacob. Their flexibility and attention to detail has been incredible in helping us achieve our vision with all the adjustments. When I talk about communicating, Sam set the new standard with PSAV. His wife was in labor during a lot of our discussions and Sam still managed to send us an email from the delivery room. <laughs> Baby, Olivia will always have a special place in our hearts. I wanna thank Alice for installing us. You're a dear friend and your friendship means the world to us. I wanna thank the incoming board. I'm looking forward to a fresh start. To the three outgoing directors, I will miss two of you. <laughs> Just kidding. One. To my friends at the ADA, Chad, Caesar, and the audit committee, thank you. The ISDS and staff, the CDS and their tireless staff, and also today for Lenny and Celeste for putting the virtual, the uh, video presentation together. I wanna thank the West Suburban Dental Society, the Independent Dental Society, most of them. The Hellenic Dental Society. I would also like to thank my family at Hatchell and Associates for all my HVAC needs. That's my brother-in-law. I wanna thank Leanne Marie Productions for her encouragement and guidance in cutting my speech in half. We hope that we can work more together in the future. To Sergeant Jared C. Jackson, our nephew, for saying the Pledge of Allegiance today and for serving our country. Also, Andy Weitraub from Denture Design, who picks up cases on the weekends and accommodates our dental schedule. Through our travels and scouting the meetings, we have made some great friendships. From Ohio, Susie, Nan, Tara, Bruce, and Mark, we were never treated better than when we were in Ohio. Stafford from California, San Francisco, Shannon from Minnesota, and Daisy and Megan from Marble Falls. Wisconsin, Sherry and company from the Breakfast Club, we will miss breakfast this year. And my friends at Hinman from Atlanta, who deep fry everything. And of course, to all my patients who have been getting rescheduled due to extra meetings, I personally thank you for your loyalty during these past years and my involvement in organized dentistry. We are so blessed with the best patients who have become part of our family. Going to work and being able to see you is the best part of my day. I would like to thank the Academy and the Hollywood Foreign Press. I always wanted to say that. Past presidents, and their qualities. Patients, family, friends, and colleagues have been asking me, what qualities do you need to become a CDS president? After much thought over the last year, I decided that you need a combination of qualities to become a CDS president. I would wanna have the wisdom of a Wally Lamacki, the longevity of a Sam Cassio, the love of a Joe DiCipio, the humility of a Perry Thunberg, the diplomacy of a Denny Manning, the tenacity of a Trusha Drummond, 
the generosity of a George Zihak, the compassion of a Keith Dickey, the kindness of a John Girding, the efficiency of a Barry Howell, the promptness of a Terry Tiersky, the niceness of a Brian Soltis, the friendliness of an Al Klazinski, the calmness of a Terry Barnfield, the ethnic pride of a John Parzakonis, the perseverance of a Chris Larson, the sense of family of a Bill Slavin, the passion of a John Williams, the faithfulness of a Todd Cubbin, the understanding of a Mike Higgins, the determination of a Ron Testa, the strength of a Daryl Beard, the foresight of a Leo Finley, the humor of a Jeff Socher, the debate qualities of a Keith Sushi, the drive of a John Fredrickson, financial smarts of a Tony Venezia, the vision of a Davy Fulton Jr., the dedication of a Frank Maggio, the leadership of a Phil Figgel, the class of a Dave Fulton Sr., the historical aspects of a Joe Unger, and of course, every single quality of a Joe Hagenbrook. Each of these past presidents has had an impact on me throughout the years. I would like to take these qualities with me as I start this new journey in 2021 as your CDS president. As I will be asking our membership what Heart of Dentistry means to them, I think about these past presidents who define Heart of Dentistry for me. I truly believe here that I am here, like Alice said, for a reason. I am blessed, honored, and humbled to be in this position to serve our CDS membership. Celeste told me not to talk about her too much or at all, but I have to. This journey would not be the same without her. We have worked together for 29 years, uh, but not in the same room. We respect each other's space and opinions. She lives and dies by her principles. We don't always agree, but that's okay. Our situation works for us. Last week, I'm uh, usually, last week I made the mistake of asking her what was for dinner. She asked me if I wanted an office manager or a wife. So I asked her which one was nicer. I love her and Mickey and Buddy as well. The four of us make it work together. It's always an experience for us. We're always looking for rainbows. I hope the gavel that I have also works at home. After all my research with The Wizard of Oz, I have found out that Celeste is the one who's behind the curtain. Thank you. I will leave you with these words from Herman Munster, no less, who said to his son, Eddie, the pretty much the same thing my father told me every day. The lesson I want you to learn is that it doesn't matter what you look like. You can be tall or short, fat or thin, ugly or handsome, black, white, yellow. It doesn't matter. What does matter is the size of your heart and the strength of your character. I appreciate you spending your afternoon with us today and sharing this experience with us. I pray for you and your family's health and safety during this time and ask that God bless the Chicago Dental Society and God bless the United States of America. Thank you.